Morning. Very warm in London again today. It's going to be in, oh, it might even get to 90. Now for, for England, for UK, that is ex quite exceptional in, in uh, June. But we do like to moan about our weather. When it's cold, we moan about it. When it's hot like this, when we can sit outside and barbecue, blah, blah, blah. We moan about that as well. Right, uh, I'm going to do a river scene, but uh, before I do, I, I, uh, thank you Bill, one of my subscribers, uh, suggested I take a look at Trevor War. I think I have come across him, but I haven't watched the video that he recommended. Well, it's a two-parter on painting, loosely painting the human figure in um, any situation. And he makes the point that Alfonso Dunn does on his drawing uh, videos about the understanding and painting or drawing the mannequin. Uh, that if you get the proportion right, it could be quite badly drawn and not well painted and still look okay. But if it's beautifully painted and drawn, but the proportions are wrong, it will always look wrong. So to, 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 to do this sort of thing, we've got to practice. So I've been practicing doing these, uh, let's just zoom out a bit, doing these figures uh, last night and a couple today. I sat in an armchair and, and, and drew those. I mean, I'm not very good at it. I, I, I admit I'm, there's a big gap in my art uh, development with being self-taught, so I went straight to the painting missed out the drawing, but now, at my age, I want to learn to be better with the figures so that I can make the landscapes more interesting. Uh, I'm a landscape man, but you can sit down with a, with a, with a sketch pad, a little sketch pad, and a, oh, one, of these, one of these clutch pencils, which uh, is really good. The, the uh, thick lead, it's probably about, we didn't find out what, what hardness it was, but I think it's about 4B. But lovely, lovely for doing this sort of thing on, on the rough paper, rough papers. So just sit there with your paints or a pencil and, and just, just imagine, but getting your proportions right. And, and I'm not taking any credit for what I say because I'm copying it or working from it, same as the rest of you. Is this the eight head, head figure. Um, the proportions are from the top of your head to the hip bone is four heads or half the length of the figure, height of the figure, and from the hip bone to the base of the feet is another four heads or half a figure. Then you can divide that again so the knees will be halfway up, halfway through the chest ca ca cavity will be, you know, another two heads down. And so, and so on, and provided, and also the, the arm, the elbow, I think, from the shoulder to the elbow is one and a half heads, and the same for the, for, to the wrist. Um, but, but not slavishly, but you just use your, your imagination or, or, or your judgment, and get the approximation of the parts right. If you could do that, with some of these are quite, I'm quite pleased with that, and that. Uh, these are all in proportion. She's, I like that one. Head's too big on that one. So don't make your heads too big. Uh, this one here, well that's the one I did last yesterday as well. well. I like some of these. But you can be imaginative, but if the proportions are right, you can put them in all sorts of shapes. Obviously bend the knee where the knee bends, not half out the hip. But with a bit of care, a bit of colour, and I used a number four sable to do them. Uh, Charles Wolfe was practicing with a number six. I haven't got a number six. I've got a number eight. But anyway, when you've got an odd moment, just do this sort of thing. Do it on decent paper as well, with, with the paint anyway. And, and treat it as a painting, but as, a, as an exercise that will take you to the next stage of drawing the figure. I don't want to do great portraits like Rembrandt. I can never be able to do that anyway. I want to paint a decent tree and a decent sky and create a bit of atmosphere, but to be able to add a bit of detail of human activity is always good. And, and up to now, some of us tend to just put it all stick, stick, stick man and let you do the rest, the imagination. But if we could just develop it a little bit further, it could make it an equal feature with the tree. 
So anyway, enough of me. Fabriano, 130 pound paper. Very good. It's cold, cold pressed. Very good paper for wet in wet. The hake. Um, got the cadmium yellow, which I think is artist's quality, but the rest are Hotsman student qualities. Raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey, burnt sienna. That's my basic palette. In my little paint boxes, for use with them, I, I add a cadmium red or a vermilion, hooker's green, a couple more blues, Windsor blue, and uh, cobalt, and yellow ochre. But for this, this is the basic one ransom palette that he came up with all those years ago. So wet. He used, he used Bockingford paper for his early stuff anyway. He might have used a thicker, heavier paper like Arches later on, but I, I don't know. I know he's one of my watercolour heroes, along with Roland Hilda, Edward uh, Wesson. Uh, right, OK. I did simple things well. And that's what I like. Right, we'll put a bit of sienna in. I'm going to make this up, but base it on a Somerset landscape or from photographs that I took last week and painted five of them. Lovely story that about my friend Chris, who, whose dad used to drive when he was alive, well, when he was a boy, used to drive sheep up Ham Hill to, to graze. His, his, grand, his father, his, his granddad was a shepherd around these parts, around uh, Ham, Ham Hill. They used to have, have ferrets, so they'd go rabbiting and take the rabbit pelts to the local glove maker and they would go to London. They, of course, worked for the, uh, the big house, as we say. The great and the not so good. Right, I'll, I'll probably only do one of these today because it's so warm. Right, I'll put a bit of blue. I've kept the uh, the paint palette in a stay wet, in a Masterson stay wet palette. Over well overnight, but it, it, the it keeps the paint lovely and, and moist. It gets nice and streaky. We'll put a bit in the river, and we'll just let that dry off. Get that bit. Okay, I'll give that a bit of a dry so. Neutral sound, go. Now you can see how simply I've painted the streaky sky, it will dry hopefully a little bit lighter than that. But you have to compensate for the 50% loss in intensity. When you put it on you think, oh I've overdone it, but when it dries, it dries back to a more manageable colour. Right, we'll put a bit of distant, distance in, distant hills. In over the levels, Somerset levels. Okay, I'll put in the banks so while I'm at it. Bit of blue, bit of cad yellow. Uh, Okay, 
So into that I'm going to put some burnt sienna, burnt, uh, a bit of ultramarine, just Give this darker colour in the, in the bank so I can put some reflections and some foliage on that. Now I want to put in a bit of bit of sienna, a bit of bit of yellow, cad yellow. This river parrot is quite uh, narrow. We, I walked along the bank here while my wife and friends stayed on the little bridge. It's all very beautiful around here. And I, I'll embellish that with some harder dry brush. Right, now we're going to put in some That's a bit of sienna. I think burnt sienna with the green gives a, gives a darker green and quite hopefully realistic. So let's just come up here with some summer. And we've got a bit of, bit of dark in there. Some, uh, I, I didn't see any pines along here. Just, just, just trees, basically. Um, we'll put a bit of, bit of nice shadow area depth in those. Try to keep your trees different from each other, don't vary. Oh, I'll put a bit, bit more blue in there as we're going over here. Okay, so let's get some Okay, so that's that's the sort of background. I'm not sure it's any better or worse than the one I did. Whoops. On Saturday morning, it's just getting oh, that's gone wrong, isn't it? So I'll have to make it all stronger.
Let's get a few more harder bits in there. If you want it to register on the wet background, just put it in thick. Oh, it just adds that bit of variety to that otherwise flat wash, washes. But I'll try to get that on the blue side. So let's just go a little bit more blue in there. Look how dark that is. No paint's grey or black. Someone asked me if I... It's my free colour video I did. Came out black. But I don't use black in watercolour. And through my three colours were raw sienna, light red and ultramarine. Now that is as good as black, but that's mixed up with three, essentially, fairly light colours. See, the, the, the uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna, but used thickly, they, they make a wonderful dark, a warm, rich dark that you can cut towards the warm or the cool, depending on how much blue is in it. Right, let's just get a bit... In here. Just want that shadow in there. So I can lift out a little bit of um no, I don't want to overdo this. Because it's nice as it is. Well I think it's nice. Okay, let's put in some uh, some detail on this on this bank, some tree or well, some shrubby elderflower type trees. I was going to use the uh, one or two of the mops, but um, I don't know. It's not really a mop day. Look how loose that paint is. So let's just get this shadow in behind that bush. Water, water is evaporating very, very quickly. So I'm getting the shape of this bank here. Just use a bit of a, a burnt sienna in that there to, uh, to make it appear closer. Yes. And stronger, a bit of stronger colour shadow. Okay, that'll do for a moment. Just sort of lose in the bank, so let's just put in a nice hard Okay, let's go on here now. Let's do it. I'll put a bit of detail in some of that. Bit of yellow.
reflections. Now, I think the burnt sienna or the common is more soluble than the ultramarine for some reason. Oh, I'll just do that over that. Okay, a uh, bit of detail on the landscape here. Bit of undulation. I think my sky has gone a bit dark, low down. It should have been lighter, but uh, well, we'll use a, put in some trunks, well, some stems of these uh, plants, these just stunted riverside trees. I'll use the rigger in a minute. Yeah, I'll use the rigger. So, same dark, blue and burnt sienna. Okay, let's put one stronger chunk in there. I also got asked, um, uh, is there a right, wrong way, or right way to hold a brush? Well. My answer to that is, if it works for you, then it's right. All this business about holding your brush at arm's length and waving it about, I couldn't get a tip of a brush within an inch of an eyeball from there. Um, so it's whatever whatever you're happy with. I'm, I'm sure our, our students in the past have spent many, many days practicing like that, well that is probably good practice, but most of us are sort of hobby painters, beginners, and still, still learning the, to be better than we are. It's got dark green there. Right, okay, now let's uh, get my little uh, sable, see if we can put a couple of little figures. Uh, I'm going to use uh, vermilion rather than the dark, the light red. There's my little palette, I've been practicing with that on my figures. Let's see, so we'll put in a bit of, uh, bit of burnt, burnt umber for his napper head. So let's put him here, so. and then we'll put in a bit of that 
have red. Actually, I think uh, vermilion would be a better colour. Though. I think that's vermilion. Yeah, slightly a bit more orange. So let's just. Um, we'll put in. Uh, see that? I'll put the head too big. So we'll make this uh, bit of shadow in there on the side of his. So let's make that a little bit bigger. And then we'll put some jeans on him. Okay, so there we are. He's walking along a path. His proportions are more or less okay. Catch a bit of light. Okay, now we can put another figure there. Uh, get them to move. Let's get the umber. A little bit heavier than that. And then we'll give uh, a blue. This is, uh, these are artist quality from, from uh, Jackson's, Jackson's own artist quality. Okay, so there we are, a couple of little figures there. Walking off into the great blue yonder, and put a little bit of, bit of well, I'll use this little bit of um, Okay, uh, I need to put in a bit of a greener tree in there, back to the other side. We have got a uh, nice green summery trees. Okay, um, I think a bit of dry brush. Uh, so we'll have a bit of, bit of the blue. Put in the mouth and we'll have a look at it. Uh, a bit of masking tape. Cool, I'm sweating here. I've got two windows open in my loft. There's, I think, there's very, very little air. We were going out tonight, but we've cancelled sitting in our garden. Uh, right, we'll put that one on. No, there's a good one. Okay, well it looks like an usher, doesn't it? I 
wanted this dark horizon because when I looked at this view, the, the trees were quite dark. It, it was such a light, bright day that the trees looked dark in, uh, in uh, comparison to the sky. But my sky has got a... I, I should, should have been more careful there. But there we are, we've got a couple of figures uh, that aren't exactly stick insects. A man and his wife, me and my wife, walking down there. Uh, so that's, that's it. I can't do any more to that, I don't think. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let's uh, bring you around and zoom in. Right, I'll just let you look at that for a couple of, or for a few seconds. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.